The doldrums of this platform have long held a superficial fascination with disturbing cinema, daring the audience not to look away whilst spewing one-dimensional ramblings about guts and grime, without feeling the need to offer any good faith critiques on the intent, ideations or execution of the work they're picking at. It's a rubbernecking phenomenon that has unfortunately relegated some genuinely transgressive, envelope-pushing art to the fringes, reducing all that they are to kill compilations and copy-paste listicles. Few modern movies have suffered more at the hands of such lowest common denominator simplification as Pascal Logier's Martyrs. An excruciating philosophical juggernaut of godless nihilism, vitriolic feminism and political commentary that for too long has been overshadowed by its extremes. Lucy was kidnapped and brutalised by strangers with no apparent motive. Fifteen years later, and with the help of her friend Anna, out for blood and looking for answers, they find both in a living hell of cold depravity. <coughs> Martyrs is often lumped in with the nasty niche known as the New French Extremity, an unconnected smattering of films that challenge or pervert social standards of sex, violence and taste. And as far as broad categorizations go, it doesn't really work. It's never been adopted by the actual filmmakers, a lot of the features associated with it aren't French, and Extreme is so entirely subjective that my dad turned off Gone Baby Gone for being too hardcore based on bad language alone. No, it's a term that originated as a facile put-down by the prudish critic James Quant, and it's a blatant puritanical attempt to minimise the intellectual impact and allegorical utility of death, nudity and taboo situations in fiction. <laughs> In the case of Martyrs, its unflinching commitment to callousness is carried out with an authorial vision that stands in absolute moral opposition to the kind of gore-hound glee the term New French Extremity was intended to chastise. This isn't hollow exploitation, it's a considered work about the extent to which women are expected to tolerate exploitation. C'est comme ça, mademoiselle. We open on a threadbare Lucy screaming into a concrete void, only to be met by uncaring silence. <coughs> Immediately after, we cut not to her recuperation or emotional response, but instead we're shown a documentary crew poring over the nuts and bolts of her debasement. Whether it's how her kidnappers perverted her purity to try and snatch a glimpse of the afterlife, or the academic probing carried out by her supposed saviours, either way she's being used as a mechanism so that others may find enlightenment. <laughs> this is a front-to-back condemnation of how we collectively build community, lasting conversations, and think piece echo chambers atop a foundation of hurting women. <laughs> that somehow, through the barbs and bitter stabs, some talking point or fall from grace will make us feel like we matter. It's this kind of cold detachment that Lucy and the unnamed woman in the basement internalise in the most appalling way. One sees only distortions of desperation and agony, the other is bound in metallic darkness. Defined by trauma and then abandoned, their anguish becomes tactile, their grief takes corporeal form, and the slings and arrows of strangers become the injuries they inflict on themselves. <laughs> this tragic turn also ties in with the more obvious biblical illusions that are suggested by the film's title. Lucy is the self-flagellating manifestation of Catholic guilt, the cultists hypocritically beat with a book everyone that book tells them to love, while Anna is the horror trope of the final girl, here rendered as a martyred saint. 
be they friend or foe, she tends to the wounded without judgement, shrouds the dead as a sign of respect, and is ultimately transfigured beyond her physical form, so that she may tread the liminal space between life and death to see what awaits us all. Marcier est un être exceptionnel, mademoiselle. Il survit à la souffrance, il survit à la privation de tout. On charge les maux de la terre et il s'abandonne. For as capital E extreme as all this is, it is never gratuitous. <laughs> yeah, we're given no quarter from tyranny, because why should we be? There is no off switch for atrocity, no denying or relinquishing our responsibility to the women who face abuse in all its insidious forms. You don't get to watch a feature with this title, this poster, released in all territories with the highest possible age rating, and then walk out of it saying, oh, I wanted that to be really horrible, but in a more fun way. <coughs> Martyr's acute severity is also a bloody rebuke of the armchair psychiatrists who say victims can only find peace by forgiving their abusers. As a response to the disquieting indifference that opens the film, with a shotgun blast, Lucy is finally heard. Just as culprits of unspeakable acts hide behind the I'm a mother slash father of daughters defence, this wounded monster pleads for amnesty based on motherhood, a mewling plea that is definitively rejected. These are just a few of the ways to read martyrs beyond the surface level slaughter, but they're by no means definitive or dyed in wool. I mean, you could see this as a war film. It starts with an initial act of aggression, which is inevitably countered in kind, based on a chasm of power, class, and religion. Then when the film takes a turn at the halfway point, it becomes an allegory for the Holocaust. It's in the latter half where this bloodshed becomes clandestine and chillingly proactive. These would-be explorers of the supernatural fill unmarked mass graves, and conduct torturous experiments on their emaciated, shaven-headed subjects. All at the behest of a sadistic leader with an unwavering belief in purity, whose unceremonious exit even goes so far as to echo that of he who shall not be named. A more contemporary analysis could even argue that this is about extrajudicial interrogation. If you don't look at me when I talk to you, I hurt you. You step off this mat, I hurt you. If you lie to me, I'm gonna hurt you now. Inflicting undignified horrors in black site bunkers under the righteous belief that the extrapolated information will justify the means. So, with all that in mind, if anyone ever tries to diminish or downplay the importance of narratively pertinent violence as a viable storytelling tool, that person is a smooth brained reductive loser. Look down. <laughs> Speaking of abject misery, the savvy folks over at Blumhouse took one of the best horror features of the 21st century and decided to co-finance an American do-over of the same name. And what do you know, it's one of the worst remakes ever made. Within Frame Out, I try to be as pragmatic as possible when mulling over misguided failures. Today is an exception, because I truly, unequivocally loathe the 2015 English-language remake of Martyrs. It's the filmic equivalent of someone blocking a toilet by trying to flush a blocked toilet down it. For the first two acts, it's a piss-poor cover version of a stone-cold classic, including word-for-word -word reiterations of the original script, because there is no getting around the fact that this only exists for people who'd rather drink Drano than read a subtitle. It's easy to create a victim. Vous enfermez quelqu'un dans une pièce noire, il commence à souffrir. And then you feed that suffering methodically, precisely, to make it last. Qu'il n'y a plus que des victimes. Martyrs. Les martyrs sont très rares. 
Aesthetically, it's trying and failing for a shot-for-shot -shot duplication, except Martyrs 2008 was captured on Super 8 and 16mm film stock, then colour timed and blown up to 35mm to add a muted, silvery granularity to each reflective moment and sandpaper sting. Martyrs 2015, on the other hand, looks like it was shot with a Ring doorbell camera, then uploaded to Snapchat so they could add a blood filter and some CG weather effects. The violence throughout is either toned down, truncated, or sanitized to the point of non existence with cutaways and other editorial cop outs. <laughs> Which isn't just cowardice, but thematic blasphemy. Like remaking Titanic and snipping out anything that takes place on a ship. Titanic go to America in five minutes! <laughs> <laughs> But it's the more pronounced changes where the filmmakers attempt to improve on perfection where things go from awful to unforgivable. Let's compare, shall we? <coughs> Lucy's feral and naked manifestation of survivor's guilt and shattered glass psychic strain? Now that's just a shabbily dressed extra in gas station Halloween makeup. <laughs> The bound, blind, and catatonic soul Anna strives in futility to save, here they're just a completely normal, prim, and proper teenage girl. What? Lucy's act of artery opening self destructive penance after she unapologetically obliterates the entire bloodline of those responsible for her childhood trauma. Well, here, she sobbingly laments and apologises after killing her abusers, then survives because the alternative would have been too sad. <laughs> Anna's torture, which was so effectively distressing because it was done with some warped approximation of love and respect. Here, it's carried out by cackling henchmen performing amateur ECT in a scene that even Eli Roth would think was pathetic. No more. <laughs> then we have the ending. Oh god, the aftermath. In Martyrs 2008, Anna wastes away for weeks and months in dislocated isolation. After being severed from all hope and humanity, she's flayed alive, at which point she physically and spiritually transcends our mortal plane. Her only means of escape from a godless existence of degradation, misogyny, systemic exploitation, and institutional persecution. Mademoiselle, the matriarch of the secret society behind all this misery, calmly capitalises on Anna's final moments of lucidity to hear whisper of what awaits us after death. Is there a heaven? Is there only hell? Or, most harrowing of all, is there absolutely nothing? The answer is left ambiguously unknown, but whatever Anna says is unimpeachable, absolute, and so existentially overwhelming that it leads to one of the most chilling final lines in modern cinema. Sauriez-vous imaginer ce qu'il y a après la mort? Sauriez-vous? Non, mademoiselle, je. Doutez, Étienne. Now, how does the absolute shithouse that is Martyrs 2015 end? <sighs> Anna does a Yas Queen, frees the other captives, and returns to the nasty pain bunker in full Rambo mode to dole out some gunishment. Lucy gets her back cut up a little bit, then does a Jesus, Anna swoops in and saves the day by killing everyone, before both her and Lucy lay down and go all milky eyed because martyrdom here only requires one day of bad vibes. Oh my fucking god. By censoring the viscera, aiming for a generic, faintly optimistic ending, airing out the acrid stench and offsetting the inhumanity, this remake irrevocably scuttles the central conceit and subtextual nervous system of the entire piece, taking an exquisite work of unapologetic extremity and turning it into the absolute antithesis of what the original intended. No. Martyrs 2015 
is the ugly, inert, and inconceivably stupid poster child of missing the point, and one of the worst horror movies ever made. <sighs> The original Martyrs is an intentionally antagonistic, hostile film, sharing the same rarefied air as Funny Games, Sallow, Man Bites Dog, and Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. It offers an out-of-body exploration of human indecency and nihilistic cold, a ferociously intellectual ideation on the fetishistic exploitation of female suffering, Catholicism, and extrajudicial interrogation. The American remake? Well, the American remake is about f***ing women until they die. That's what we're recreating. And we're so close. The modern reduction of martyrs to some mortified meme of clickbait shock is akin to an act of cultural vandalism, a willfully ignorant and asinine refusal to engage beyond the most skin-deep assessments of blood and bondage, so hack content farmers can inexplicably slot it between a Serbian film and human centipede on some gauche ranking of the most disturbing movies ever. And that's just a crime. Because for every savage act here, there's an idea. For every vile image, there's a conceptual anchor. And for every troubling tease of something despicable, there's another reason that Martyrs is an unrelenting masterpiece. A delightful first to date movie for Jennifer C., Claire M. D., Becky O., Hales and Rue, Historically Dumb, Jake R., and Nicholas Le Revere, and a Mother's Day gift for the ages for all these amazing folks who support us over on Patreon. So, what do you think of Martyrs? Did you think it went too far? And what was your main takeaway from it? Let me know down in the comments, or we can just commiserate about the remake together. And if you'd kindly like, share, and subscribe, it really helps us out. If you're in a position to do so, check out our Patreon at the link in the description below, where you can get access to the Infremount Film Club and a bunch of other fun stuff while keeping the channel afloat. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Infremount. Out.